Welcome to video four for week three. In the previous video, we introduced loci, and particularly loci of linear equations, giving us points, lines, planes, and hyperplanes. Here I want to specifically talk about the equations of planes, a way to understand those, and then how to actually calculate those. Equations of planes are our best access to a description of a plane, the most useful thing to work with. So we'd like to be able to have equations for the planes that we want to describe. So let's think a moment about a linear equation and a locus of a linear equation. So a general linear equation, I can write this way. Uh, if uh, ui are the variables and ai are the constants and c is another constant. And I can actually think of this as a dot product. This looks like a dot product. Dot product takes the first two things, multiplies them together. Now that should be a one. Takes the second two things, multiplies them together, so forth and so on. So I get these two multiplied together, these two multiplied together, these two multiplied together. So this expression can be rewritten as a dot product of a vector of constants and a vector of the variables of the system. I want to think about R3, so planes in three-dimensional space. So my vector of constants is going to be three unknown constants, and my vector of variables is going to be the conventional variables in R3, x, y, and z. So this is a nice way of thinking about the equation of a plane. A plane is x, y, and z, the variables, dot product some constants equals some other constants. There's four constants involved, and I want to use those constants to describe what's actually going on with this plane. So here's that form, equation of a plane as a dot product. This vector of constants is called the normal vector to the plane, and normal here is used in the sense of perpendicular or orthogonal. Perpendicular, uh, normal is frequently used as a synonym for perpendicular. It's also used for a bunch of other things in mathematics. It's one of the most overused words we have. I apologize for that. But in this context, in the normal to the plane, it is perpendicular to the plane. If the constant is equal to zero, then the plane goes to the origin, because then zero, zero, zero satisfies the equation in the plane. So if that's the case, then this vector is an actual real ordinary vector in R3, starting at the origin, that is perpendicular to the plane. So if I have my plane somewhere here and the origin here, I've got some vector that sticks out there uh, that is perpendicular to the plane. So if this is the origin, this vector n will be my normal vector perpendicular to the plane. If c is not equal to zero, then the plane doesn't go through the origin. But this still works, this picture still makes sense, as a local direction. So if I think of a point on my plane and momentarily pretend the origin is there, then this vector of constants will still be perpendicular to the plane as if that were the origin. And that's what we talk about local directions. Local directions are at a point as if momentarily we pretended that point was the center of space. That's the setup. How do we actually do the calculation? I'm going to do it in three ways, given diff three different pieces of information. The easiest way to describe a plane is to give a point and a normal. So I have a plane that goes to this point that is perpendicular to some local direction. What's the plane that goes to the point 3, 0, negative 1, and is perpendicular to negative 1, negative 5, negative 4? So the first thing I do is I take the coefficients, the, the entries of the normal vector, and I put them in as the constants in the linear equation. Negative 1, negative 5, negative 4, the dot product with x, y, z, and I make that equal to some unknown constant c. The normal gives me the three constants that are on the left side of the equation, but it doesn't give me the constant c. I get the constant c from using the point. So now I'm going to put the point in for the coordinates, 3 for x, 0 for y, negative 1 for z, right there. And that turns the left side entirely into numbers, and the right side is still c. So I just do this calculation. In this case, I get negative 3 plus 0 plus positive 4. That gives me 1. And that tells me that the constant should be 1. And then let, that lets me finish the equation of the plane. Uh, I already had the constants negative 1, negative 5, and negative 4 up there. And now I have the constant 1. x, y, and z are my variables, so I leave them alone. So the plane that goes to the point 3, 0, 1 and has the normal negative 1, negative 5, negative 4 is the plane with this equation. 
Now the equation of play is not entirely unique. You could scale this. You could multiply both sides of the equation by any number you want, non-zero number. Um, often I'll scale it so it's the easiest thing to deal with without denominators, but there are different preferences for that. So know that it's possible um, if you had negative 2x, negative 10y, negative 8z equals 2. That's also the equation displaying, because I divide both sides by 2 and get the original equation back. It's a good thing to remember if you're doing work with uh, some of your classmates and you get different equations for planes, they may both be correct if they just differ by multiplication or division by a constant on both sides of the equation. All right, so that's given a point and a normal. That's not usually how planes are described. So I want to give two other situations for how we do this. Sometimes we're given a point and two local directions on the plane. So if I have a plane here and a point, I can have a local direction here and a local direction here, which are vectors that actually sit on the plane. And that's not, not a terribly uncommon way to describe a plane. We have an operation in R3 that takes two vectors and produces a third vector, which is perpendicular to both the original vectors, that operation is the cross product. So if I've given two local ve directions, so two vectors u and v which are local directions, I can produce the normal by taking the cross product. Then I have a point and a normal and I do exactly what was on the previous slide where I put the normal into the left side of the equation as the coefficients, put the point in, calculate the constant c, write the equation of the plane. Lastly, perhaps the most common way to describe a plane in R3 is to give three points. And as long as the three points aren't on one line, um, they will describe a plane. Given any three points, there's a unique plane that goes through all three points, again, as long as they're not on the same line. So three points are vectors, P, Q, and R are vectors, points uh, are vectors, that's how we describe points. So if I have these things here, on the plane, I'd like to describe some local directions. And I can describe the local directions as the differences between those points. So in this case, q minus p or q minus r, you could have chosen anything to be the first thing here, q. I do want to choose uh, the first vector to be the same so that my local directions start at the same place. But however you do it, you can take the differences of these three things to get your two local directions. And then we're in the case we had before, we got two local directions, we take the cross product to take the normal, and then we do what was on the previous slide. So starting from three points, it's a multi-step process, but each step is, is a reasonable bit of vector arithmetic. First, a couple of vector differences, then a cross product, then some algebra with the equation of the plane, and eventually you will end up with the full equation of the plane which, as I said before, is really how we want to describe planes and the most useful way of working with them.